Hi, my name's Keith. In this video, I'll be giving you a tech overview of the Sequential Circuits Model 800 sequencer. At first glance, it just looks like a regular step sequencer, but you'll notice there are no knobs. That's because the Model 800 records the incoming CV and gate information digitally. Sequences can be up to 256 steps long, and you can edit them after the fact. I don't have a schematic or a user manual for the Model 800, so all the information I'm presenting in this video I learned from opening up the sequencer, tracing out the circuits on the circuit board, or just playing around with the functions. So if you have any additional information, or you find any errors that I've made, please comment in the video. Let's start by looking at the front panel. Here are the controls on the front. Across the top are the memory bank selector switches. The memory is split into 16 banks, each holding 16 notes. That's a total of 256 notes. The switches select which banks are live, and I have the first four banks enabled here. The LEDs indicate which bank is currently recording or playing back, so right now it's on the first bank. At the bottom here in the middle is a dual seven segment display showing the current note number in the current bank. Now it starts counting at zero, so right now it's showing zero, which is the first note in the first bank. Here's the step switch, and if I step through all 16 notes in the first bank, so I'm at 15, which is the 16th note because we started at zero, I'll go to the next note, and it automatically advances the memory bank to the second one. And I'll advance to the end of the second memory bank, 15, which is the 16th note. The next note, we're automatically at the third one, and so on. There's a reset button, and when you hit that, it resets the note number and also the memory bank back to the beginning. On the left is the voltage record switch, and it allows you to enable or disable the recording of the CV information. That's the pitch information. This allows you to fix timing errors without disturbing any of the recorded pitches. Across the middle, are the transport buttons to put the sequencer in and out of record mode. And on the right is the single voltage record switch. It allows you to overwrite the CV of the currently selected note. That allows you to fix wrong pitches without disturbing the timing. It's kind of the complement of the voltage record switch. On the left is the uh, control knob for the clock and also switches to put it into half, normal, or double speed mode. I already told you about the step and the reset buttons. So now we'll flip it over and I'll show you the back. Here are the connections on the back. The first is trigger in. It should actually be labeled gate in as a sequencer will time how long the note on and note offs are. So each step in the sequence does not have to have the same duration. So it's actually recording the gate time. There are two options. One is for V-Trigs used by every manufacturer except Moog, and the other is for S-Trigs used by Moog. Next is the voltage in or the CV in. After that is trigger out, and there are options for V-Trigs, S-Trigs, 5 or 15 volts, and long and short trigs. Even though it's recording gate information, it only sends trigs out. And the last uh, jack here is the CV voltage out. There are two options. The first option loops the input voltage and gate information to the output jacks while you're in record mode. The second option does not loop them through. You would select this depending on how your synth handles sending and receiving CVs at the same time. You want to avoid a continuous uh, uh, feedback loop, so if your synthesizer also uh, echoes the input to output CVs and gates, you would turn this off. Otherwise, you would turn this on. To the far right is a foot pedal jack, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Across the top are jacks for external clock in and also output jacks to allow you to chain more than one Model 800 sequencer together. Now I'll show you the foot pedal. Here's the foot pedal. It allows your remote control of start record, stop record, and clock on and off. These buttons are also available on the front panel of the sequencer. Now let's open up the Model 800. The first thing you notice when you open the Model 800 is there's no CPU. Everything's run by clocked logic. 
The master clock is up here in the corner. You can barely see it. It's a simple 555 timer circuit running at a few kilohertz. Below the 555 is a series of divider chips. They take the output of the 555 and supply the various clock signals required by the memory, analog to digital, digital to analog, and the other logic circuits uh, that run the sequencer functions. In the middle here are five 2101 static RAM chips. Each one of these can hold 256 values of 4 bits. Near the RAM up here, there's two larger chips. They're used to mux and demux the memory bank selector switches and the LEDs from the front panel. And that's uh, what's traveling up here um, uh, through these two ribbon cables. To the left of the RAM is a, a 2502 successive approximation register. In modern terms, that would just be called the analog to digital converter. And it's used to sample the CV inputs. And that's what's coming down these two ribbon cables here. This chip can sample at 8 bits, but only 6 of them are used in the Model 800. But if you quantize to the semitone, 6 bits is enough to count 64 notes, or just over 5 octaves. So that's enough resolution for a step sequencer. Down here, you'll see 6 transistors, a resistor ladder, and an op-amp. This is basically a do-it-yourself 6-bit digital-to-analog converter, and it, it's what drives the CV outputs. Uh, again, go, those uh, CV outputs go up through these two ribbon cables here. Right to the left of uh, the transistors is a series of trimmers, and they're used to set the CV scale and range. To the left of everything is a cluster of CMOS chips. They're used to form the output gates and the clocks. There are also a few op-amps scattered about that are used as buffers for the input and output signals. The rest of the chips are 7400 series logic that controls the sequencer functions. Now when I got this sequencer, the power supply had just been uh, rebuilt, but the sequ sequencer itself didn't function. And after tracing uh, uh, the circuits, I found that the clock signals, most of the op-amps, and the CMOS chips were all blown. So once I uh, traced what was, uh, wasn't working and replaced it, the sequencer came back to life. Now that I'm done with the tech overview, you might want to see the sequencer in action. So I've created another video called Sequential Circuits Model 800 Demo. And in that video, I record some sequences, uh, try out all the functions, and do some editing in real time. Thanks for watching.